Welcome back guys. In this photo editing video, I'm going to share with you how we can prepare and optimize our photos for canvas printing inside of Photoshop. In particular, I'll be sharing with you how we can put a mirror wrap on the canvas. I'm also going to show you how we can add our signature in the corner and also how to take photos that might have come from a relatively substandard camera, you know, like an older, smaller sensor and still print it very large and have it looking really good as well. Sound good? Let's get into Photoshop. Bit of a throwback in time, this one. This is 2006 in Germany. This was shot on a Nikon D200. It's got a lot of issues such as pixelation and noise, but for now, I'm going to ignore those issues and we'll pretend like we're happy with the file. We just want to add that gallery wrap and the signature as well. So I'll show you how to do that and we'll revisit how to optimize this photo later if that's something that you need to do for your photos as well. So let's fit on screen and here you can see in our layers section, we currently just have the background only. So the first thing I'd recommend doing is double clicking that background layer and calling it base. And now we're going to make sure that our photo prints to canvas at the right size. So come up here to image, come to image size, and here we're able to specify the size of the canvas we want. We can either work in inches or we could switch over to centimeters if we prefer. Those canvases I showed you before were one meter wide canvases. So let's set that as well. And the other key thing is to make sure that your resolution is set to the optimum pixels per inch resolution that your printer accepts. The majority of commercial printers recommend a PPI, pixels per inch, or just resolution as it's called here, of 300 pixels per inch. We want to make sure that we're going to resample the image so we're actually upscaling it. And now I've clicked those, it's just reset my figures. So I'll just re-input 100 centimeters check the height, check my resolution, and now I just want to make sure that my upscaling algorithm is the best option. To be honest, the image quality in this file is so bad that none of these algorithms are really gonna save us, to be honest. You know, I can flick through these and see which one looks better, like perhaps preserve details, perhaps by cubic smoother. Either way, it doesn't look great, but at least we're able to see a preview of exactly how the ink will be laid down on canvas relative to the pixels. So we just click OK, and I'm gonna right click and come to fit on screen again and actually just zoom out one more stage so I can see the area around the canvas where we're going to add our wrap. So now we've set the correct image size, we now want to change the canvas size. So if we come to image, and just below image size where we went before, now we're gonna choose canvas size, and you have this checkbox that says relative here. If that's not ticked, what you're gonna see are the actual dimensions of your canvas currently and you could choose to add the amount of wrap onto that, or what I prefer to do is just have this set to relative, and then whatever number you put in here, so for example, eight centimeters, we know that that's going to add eight centimeters to the height and the width, which is equivalent to four centimeters on each side, so four centimeters all the way around the edge. So we're now going to add the mirrored wrap around the edge. And this is really important because if you don't actually mirror what's on the front around the sides, well, for one, you've got nothing there. The other option is just to increase the size of the picture on the front, and then you're gonna lose some of that photo as it wraps around the edge. So let's mirror the front around these edges. So the first thing we want to do is duplicate this base layer. So I'm just gonna drag it down onto this icon here. That's gonna create a copy of that layer. I'm gonna rename my layers so you can see what's going on, but you really don't have to. Now we're gonna press Control T, which brings up our transform tool. We're gonna to right click or option click on a Mac, and we're going to come down to flip horizontal. So as you can see, that's just flipped our photo over the other way. I'm now going to click and drag this over to the left hand side but we want to make sure that we press the shift key when we're doing this and that will constrain it to the same horizon line so we're going to stay flush once you're happy that that's locked in just press enter and now we have the left hand side of our photo now sometimes there's a small quirk in photoshop where you're going to end up with just a very faint line just down there so be mindful of that but i'm going to show you how we can fix that in just a moment but for now, we're gonna do the same thing over on the right-hand side. So we can do this a couple of ways. We can come down and again do the same, drag a copy of that base layer, press Control T to transform, and then we're gonna flip it horizontally again. And now we can drag it over, making sure we hold the Shift key, and then it's gonna to snap to the edge just there. 
Now, if when you move the mirrored edge over, it's not snapping perfectly to the side of the canvas, what you want to do is come up to view in the menu here and just make sure that you have snap turned on here. So I've just turned it off and now I've turned it on. So the next step is we want to take everything we've created through the middle part of the photo here and mirror that up to the top and the bottom. So what I'm going to do is actually create another version of the base layer here. And now I'm just going to select all three, select the base layer. We're going to hold shift and now click on the very top layer, the left hand side that we have here. So now we have these three selected. We're going to right click and come down to merge layers. OK, so we could drag this down onto the new layer icon like we did previously. Alternatively, what I prefer to do is always use a hotkey where I can. So I just pressed Control J and that has duplicated that layer. I'll call it Top Strip and again press Control T to transform it. Right click and this time I'm going to flip it vertically. I'm going to drag that up, holding the Shift key again and wait until it snaps. Hit my Enter key and now we have our top mirror edge. And now I'm going to show you another alternative for duplicating and moving that layer because it's always good to have alternatives that allow us to work quicker. So I'm going to press the V key on my keyboard. That gives me my move tool. And now I'm going to press and hold the Alt key. That's option on a Mac. And now when I click and drag, I'm duplicating the layer that I just clicked and dragged on. I'm also going to add Shift as I start to bring that down. I kind of ran out of room there and if that happens to you when you're dragging it down just release that's fine because now we have our new layer here which I'll call bottom strip <laughs> and this is a PG video don't worry about that now we just need to drag it down holding the shift key at the same time and again that's going to constrain it to perpendicular movement so now we have our bottom we have our top and we have the center strip and below that there's the base so what I want to do is now merge all three of these into one layer. So I'll select them all again. So I've selected the center strip layer here. I'm going to hold the shift key and click on the very top layer there. That selects everything in between as well. We right click and I'm going to merge those layers. And now I'm just going to deal with that little anomaly, which is an issue of transparency around the edge here. So all I'm going to do is just duplicate this layer a few times, pressing Control J, Control J, Control J. Doesn't matter how many times you do that, just as long as you get rid of that transparency. And now let's select all of these, right click, merge layers. And now you can see here we have our canvas with our gallery wrap. Sorry, excuse me, our mirror wrap. Now what about a signature? because all of my landscape photos end up being sold through my landscape photography website and I want the people who are buying my work to know that this is a custom Anthony Turnham piece of art. So I add my signature to all of my prints. So how do we put our signature in the corner so that that's not mirrored around the edges as well? Well, that's why we waited until we've already created our mirror wrap before we add our signature. But how do you know exactly where to put it now that we've got this so that you know where that's going to appear in the corner of the canvas? That's why we kept our base layer. Let me show you what I mean. So I have a signature saved as a PNG file, which I'm going to come to file and I'm going to place that over the photo. I'm going to press my V key again so I have my move tool and as you can see I can move this around. Now at the moment I'm kind of guessing where I'd be putting that and at the moment it's currently obnoxiously large as well so we'll deal to that. So I'm going to hide our wrapped version and re-show the base layer. So now you can see what will be the front face of the canvas and you can also see where that signature is sitting. I'm going to press Control T to transform my signature and as I start moving this because I've set Photoshop's units to centimeters, I can see the exact size that I'm creating. And I don't like my signature any bigger than two centimeters. So although we can't really see what's going on there and that looks really small, that's actually about the right size. So if I'm happy with that, I just press enter and that's locked that in. And now we can move that around and just make sure we're happy with the positioning. Now, providing your signature layer has transparency built into it, we can actually custom color our signature now because sometimes you don't want pure white or black or whatever it is. You might want to match, say, the highlight color that's most predominant in the frame. So let me show you how to do that as well. We're going to come down to this icon here and we're just going to add solid color. We're going to press OK. It doesn't matter which color this is at the moment because we can change it. All we want to do now is hold the Alt key or Option on a Mac and click in between these two layers. You can see as I get exactly between the two, the icon changes from a hand to this square with a little arrow. So click that 
And now that's saying apply this color only to the layer below. And if we look at our little signature down here, you can see it's no longer white. It has the color of this layer here. And to select a different color, all we need to do now is double click that layer and we get the solid color picker where we can come around and choose any color we like. But what I prefer to do is move the color sample picker over the photo itself. And now I can pick a custom color from the photo. So we can get that nice bright orange. We can get highlighted blue. We can get anything we like. So I think I'm gonna go for like this orange here. Although we can't see it very well at the moment, what I'm gonna do then is just reduce the opacity down to about 50%. And now we've got an off-white that harmonizes much better with the actual photo. And now we can turn back on our mirrored wrap. And as the last step to take us from Photoshop through to our printer, we need to save or export our work. And we need to do that in a format that the printer is going to recognize. If we save a 16-bit file in the ProPhoto color space, the printer is not going to be able to reproduce that range of colors. And so it's much better for us to optimize our photo ready for the printer here inside Photoshop, rather than trusting that the printer is gonna reproduce the colors that we want accurately. So the first thing I like to do is flatten our image. So we come up to the little icon in the layers palette here, click that and come down to flatten image. And now we're back to having just a background layer. I like to double click this just so it's an active layer. No real reason other than habit. And now in the mode section under image, we're gonna come in here. We want to make sure we're not in 16 bits, rather in eight bits. And if you are in 16 bits and then you switch to eight bits, Photoshop will just do that conversion for you. And you also want to come into the edit section and make sure that you come into convert to profile and just check that your profile is sRGB because that is the most widely supported color space. For most of my editing these days, I'm normally working in ProPhoto RGB or Adobe RGB, and that always needs to be converted down into sRGB. All you need to do is make sure that the destination space says sRGB, you choose it from the list here, and you just click OK. And now we come to save a copy, file, save a copy, and I'll normally add a reference to the size of the photo, the color space, and the wrap that has been added, in this case, four centimeters. And providing that the printer that you're using doesn't have any upload limitations, I would recommend save your work in as high quality as possible, in this case, 12. So what we've done there is we've created a mirror wrap and we've added a signature as well. Now, this photograph here was actually shot on a D200, just like this photo, and this is printed at a meter wide. It has no noise in this file, it's beautifully sharp, and I've sold six or seven versions of this canvas before, and every customer has been absolutely delighted. So how do we go about optimizing our photos that may be low resolution, maybe noisy, as in this case here, and get a really nice clean print out of it. Well, I used an upscaling tool that has AI technology built into it so that we can minimize noise, optimize sharpness, and even add detail that wasn't there in the first place. It's pretty amazing. Let me show you, it's really easy software to use. All you need to do is open your file. Your photo is going to be loaded into a four up preview display and each preview represents a different AI model. And the AI model that you go for will depend on your subject matter. So as a quick look now in the bottom corner here, we have the standard model that normally does a really good job for things like animals and people. It's doing a pretty hideous job here. However, in the top left, low resolution, bottom left, very compressed, that looks way better. Currently, we are upscaling by a factor of two. However, when we're dealing with a canvas, we want to put in a specific size. So I'm gonna change my output width to centimeters, and again, we'll go for a 100 centimeter wide canvas. And we want to make sure that our pixels per unit, in this case, pixels per inch, is set to 300 again. Now, usually if I have a file with a lot of digital noise in it like this, I'll usually use Gigapixel in conjunction with Topaz Denoise as well. And I'll put a link to both of these in the description below. However, if you have to choose between one and the other, I would certainly recommend go for Gigapixel AI because as you can see in the low resolution version here, which is just updating, if we look at the sky, it's actually removing all of that noise while at the same time adding detail into the trees and even the lampposts and the flowers here as well. The AI is super intelligent because as you can see, it's recognized that there are water reflections here. And if I press down on the mouse, you can see our before and release for afterwards. It's just cleaning this up so nicely. 
So low res is looking really good, as you can tell from this split screen here as we <laughs> move it over to clean this up. It's really doing a great job of bringing back the resolution and taking care of the noise as well. So I may go for that, but I just wanna double check very compressed as an alternative. Here's our before, here's our after, before and after. It's doing a nice job, but I think I prefer low res. So I'll go back to that, yeah, and just save image. It's gonna save it back in the same place. And not only have we cleaned our image up, but you can see that we're now working with a 100 by 66 centimeter file. So we don't need to do any upscaling in Photoshop. We just need to open the file up, add eight centimeters to the canvas all the way around, create our horizontal mirrors, merge that center strip, flip it vertically and move that up, bring a copy of that down, snap it to the bottom, add our signature, which we are going to transform down to about two centimeters, which I find about right, drag that into the corner. We're not quite sure where that is. So we'll hide those layers, revealing our original base. Yep, pretty happy with where that is. Turn those layers back on, duplicate them a few times, flatten the image, convert the profile, make sure we're in sRGB, which we are, make sure we're in eight bits per channel, and then just save that out as before. But I am going to drag this over the top of our original version so we can do a direct comparison. So let's close that down. Let's zoom into 100% here. And we can have a little look at the original and look how noisy that is. And this is the gigapixel version before and after. And I certainly think we're going to see a big difference between the building here and the sky. So look at the sky. The noise is all gone when we see the gigapixel version. This is our before, very noisy cleaned up with gigapixel and look at the building here such low resolution and then here's our gigapixel version look at all the detail brought back original low res super noisy here's the gigapixel version that is just going to print so much better on the canvas so that's how we create an optimized photo with a mirror wrap ready for printing. So if you want to get the best quality possible from your upscaling, certainly recommend Gigapixel AI. I'll put a link to that in the description below. But if you want to go one step further, there is also Denoise AI, which is excellent for cleaning up files. So you can run Denoise and then put that photo through Gigapixel. Or if you want to go one step further still, there is now Photo AI from Topaz, which is where they've combined the best of their three powerhouse on image optimization programs, Sharpen AI, Denoise AI, and Gigapixel AI. All of that industry leading technology in one software app, which will vastly improve the quality of your photos. The only reason I haven't used it here is because it is more expensive, obviously, because it's got all three in one, but it's an excellent choice if making sure you've got the best file possible before it goes to print is important to you. I would certainly recommend that. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Let me know what you thought in the comments below, and I'll see you in another video. Bye-bye for now.